All right, so let's implement a controller that can feed us the data so that we can dynamically uh, render this page as opposed to just being uh, static. Uh, so let's, um, let's uh, uh, create a controller for, for this uh, widget list. Um, let's implement it under a directory called uh, controllers. And it'll be a JavaScript. We'll call it uh, web, web, uh, widget uh, list.controller.client.js. Uh, and uh, so this is going to be a, um, an iffy, right? A, a, an immediately invoked uh, a, a expression, function expression, that is going to load the module that we've been working uh, through the last couple weeks. Um, and it's going to add a controller to it. It's going to decorate the following function and, and name it. It's going to register this controller uh, as called as widget list controller, so that we can then refer to it uh, f uh, from when we register the template right, and say that this is a controller that goes with, that with this template. And it's implemented in a function of the same name. There we go. All right. Uh, so for now, uh, let's uh, let's put some data here. Right, so that this controller can then send it over to the uh, to the view, and I believe we've given you some data in, on assignment three. You know, half halfway through the this document, we we gave you a list of users, we gave you a list of websites, uh, and somewhere here we are we gave you a list of widgets. There there they are. So let's grab this array of widgets and let's uh, put it in here. Right. Uh, so this will be var widgets equal to this array that we gave you. Um, all of these widgets noted that it has uh, some some attributes that dis, uh, you know, um, describe the type of widgets, whether they're heading widgets, images, YouTube widgets, uh, raw HTML widgets. Um, also, they say they also have kind of like a foreign key uh, relationship here saying who their parent's page ID is. Uh, notice that they all belong to the same page, 321. Um, also, they have some some uh, some attributes that only make sense to that particular widget, right? So, for instance, size might only mean something at the widget at the heading widget, right? But it means nothing uh, for the HTML uh, widget. Yes. So the schemas are a little bit different, and, and that's fine. Um, first of all, uh, um, uh, Mongo supports uh, various variable schemas, right, for different records in the same collection. Um, also, it's a very common way of implementing uh, um, inheritance and, uh, and, and um, spe spe special uh, specializations and generalizations uh, from UML class diagrams. That's how you would implement it in uh, e even in SQL schemas, right? You would have a, a base uh, table that can uh, implement uh, all the attributes that are common. Notice that all all widgets have these common uh, these common uh, attributes, page ID, uh, widget type, ID, those are all common, but then you have some attributes that are specific uh, to that particular widget, right? So uh, so those are kind of like a, in, um, um, uh, you know, subclasses of the parent uh, ab abstract uh, class of widget, right? Uh, so, so you can implement that as well with using some, some uh, techniques in, um, in, uh, in SQL databases, relational databases, but in, in, uh, in, in MongoDB it's very common, right, to have uh, different documents with different schema, so that's that's perfectly fine. All right, so we have we have that. Let's uh, let's focus on sending this over to the template for rendering. Uh, first, let's create the uh, the instance uh, of the controller so that we can bind the data to the model. So we'll call this the widgets widgets widgets. Right, so so uh, um, uh, by doing this, right, we're binding it to the instance of the controller, and so on the on the on the template side, we just have to refer to it by the instance of the controller. So uh, first of all, before we forget, we let's um, let's uh, load this uh, controller uh, in the um, in our index page. Uh, let's see, uh, this is becoming a mess. Uh, so let's uh, let's organize this a little bit. This is uh, all the controllers and services for the user, right? And these were all for the uh, for the website website. Uh, actually, not that bad, right? Uh, and um, you'll have page here, and this is going to be yours, right? You're going to TBD. 
uh, or a lot of um, a lot of uh, IDEs support the uh, tagging of to dos, right? Uh, and then you can filter on that keyword and see all the things that need to be done, and then assign, you know, create them as tasks in your controls, uh, in your in your issue, in your in your ticketing system, right? So that you, you know, different different teams are assigned to different features. All right, so let's do uh, widgets, widget, and uh, let's uh, create a script. Uh, let's load that script we just created, which is under um, views, uh, widgets, and controllers, and widget controller. There it is. All right. So we loaded that, and then in the configuration, we can then tie though that new that that new controller. We can tie it to the templates, and we'll say that that widget list controller we just declared uh, can be referenced from within. The, uh, the template as the keyword model. Um, all right, so on the templates, on the template side, right, the one who's going to be rendering this, presumably we have now that array available here in the templates, right? So let's render it here, see if, it, if indeed uh, it made it here uh, through the keyword model, that's the instance of the controller, and presumably we have now widgets here, okay? So let's, uh, let's um, refresh our page. Uh, and indeed, we have the array of widgets here. All the array of widgets are there. Uh, so what we, we need to be able to do now is just iterate uh, over, over these widgets and, um, and, and, and render them one at a time. Okay? And so let's, let's focus at, on that now.